On Sunday, George Stephanopoulos, hosting this week political news on ABC, talks with Janet Yellen, United States Secretary of the Treasury to get some answers on the possibility of the country defaulting on its bills if the debt ceiling is not raised by June 1, 2023. Let's start out with the timeline now of this of this possible de uh, default. Uh, you said earlier this week that you expect that it could come as early as June 1st. I know you get new information every day. Is that still your best estimate? Uh, yes, early June is when we project that we will run out of cash and there is a chance it could be as early as June 1st. Of course, there is a lot of uncertainty and I plan to update Congress as new information uh, becomes available, but that's still our current thinking. Are there extraordinary measures you can take around that time or is that it? Well, really, that's it. We have been using extraordinary measures for several months now, and um, our ability to do that is running out, and we will start to run down our cash, and um, our current projection is that in early June, a day will come when we're unable to pay our bills unless Congress raises the debt ceiling, and it's something I strongly urge Congress um, to do. Of course, it's appropriate to have negotiations about the budget, about spending priorities. President Biden has presented a detailed budget that does cut deficits by $3 trillion over 10 years while investing uh, in the strength of the American economy. Um, but uh, we do need to raise the debt ceiling to avoid economic calamity. What, what it, paint a picture for everyone. What happens on that day? Let's assume for the sake of argument it's June 1st. What happens that day if the debt limit has not been extended? Well, Treasury finds itself in a position where we're unable to pay all of the bills that um, come due that day. And um, this would be really the first time in the history of America that we would fail to um, make payments that are due. Um, and, you know, whether it's defaulting on uh, interest payments that are due on the debt or payments due for Social Security recipients or um, to Medicare providers, uh, th we would simply not have enough cash to meet all of our obligations. And um, it, it's widely agreed that financial and economic chaos would ensue. Uh, U.S. Treasury securities are the safest um, bedrock security um, underlying the global financial system. Uh, a failure of the United States to honor all of its debt would call into question uh, our credit worthiness, even as we get very close to this date, if Congress doesn't act, we're likely to see financial market consequences. In 2011, there was a steep decline in the stock market and our borrowing costs. Um, back in 2011, the U.S. Uh, was downgraded by the credit rating agencies. There would be permanently higher borrowing costs for American for buying a home, buying a car, and um, a failure to raise the debt the question, ceiling would cause a steep economic downturn. The question is what to do about it. Of course, you talked about spending cuts. We've now seen 43 Republican senators say uh, they're not going to extend the debt limit without significant spending cuts and other reforms. Of course, the House passed their bill as well, but the president says he's not going to negotiate. So are we, is, is one possibility that you do a side negotiation on spending cuts? The president says it's not tied to the debt limit. Republicans say it is. Well, look, I don't want to get ahead of um, the negotiations that will occur. Uh, President Biden has invited, invited the leadership of Congress to the White House on Tuesday. I know he wants to set up a process um, in which spending priorities and levels um, are discussed and negotiated, but these negotiations w sh should not take place with a gun uh, really to the head of the American people because— But they are taking um, place with that gun to the head of the American people. Well, it's important for Congress to meet a responsibility. 
uh, since 1960, the debt ceiling has been raised 78 times, uh, three times during the prior administration, always with bipartisan support. And it simply is unacceptable for Congress to threaten economic calamity for American households and the global financial system as um, the cost of uh, raising the debt ceiling and um, getting agreement on budget priorities. But, of course, a negotiation about spending um, levels and um, priorities should take place, and the president is um, more than prepared to engage in that negotiation. Of course, there's always a chance. Of course, there's always the chance with this kind of negotiation, this kind of brinksmanship, that you don't reach a deal, and then it, then it comes back to the president. Uh, he said on Friday night that he's not ready to invoke the 14th Amendment. Of course, the 14th Amendment says that full faith and credit of the United States should not be questioned, and the implications of that would be, if he invoked it, is the United States would just continue to issue debt, saying it's unconstitutional not to. Now, the president said he's not ready to do that, but it didn't seem like he took it off the table. So is it still a possibility? Look, you know, our priority is is to make sure that Congress does its job. There is no way to protect um, our financial system and our economy other than Congress doing its job and raising the debt ceiling and enabling us to pay our bills. And we should not get to the point where we need to consider whether the president can go on uh, issuing debt. This would be a constitutional crisis. But do you? But is it on the table? Is it something that could be considered? Are you saying you just said there's no way this can be done without Congress? Is that a hard and fast position that the president will, under no circumstances, invoke the Fourteenth Amendment? Look, I, all I want to say is that it's Congress's job to do this. If they fail to do it, we will have an economic and financial catastrophe that will be of our own making. And um, there is no action that President Biden uh, and the U.S. Treasury can take to prevent that uh, catastrophe. I, I'm still not exactly clear on, on whether it's on the table or off the table. Is it a break glass in case of emergency option? Look, I, I don't I don't want to consider emergency options. Um, what's important is that members of Congress recognize what their responsibility is and um, avert what will surely be, regardless of how it's handled, what option is used to handle it, um, an economic and financial catastrophe. It sounds like you're saying you don't want to, but you may have to. Well, what to do if Congress fails to meet its responsibility? There are simply no good options. And the ones that you've listed are among the not good options. A final question. I want to ask you a question about the banking crisis. We've seen three bank failures this year. Two more regional banks appear to be on the edge. Do you believe, still believe that our banking system is strong and resilient? We don't have a systemic problem? I do believe that. Uh, I believe our banking system uh, has strong capital levels and access to liquidity. Um, we've taken decisive action to make sure that difficulties at a few banks don't create contagion that undermines the confidence of depositors um, in the safety of their deposits in the banking system. And the tools we used previously, we would be prepared to use again if necessary. But um, while bank stocks, some bank stocks are under downward pressure, earnings um, have been under pressure, uh, the banks have access to liquidity and are well capitalized. And uh, I have confidence in the overall strength of the banking system. Madam Secretary, thanks for your time this morning. Thank you.